uh, as he gives Chelsea another victory. 1-0 this time over Newcastle. Just taking a look at what that means. For the tail, they're not going to catch the top two. Arsenal are going to catch them. Arsenal are gonna, uh, Chelsea are going to finish third. Uh, you feel this season. But for more on this, let's welcome in, shall we? Uh, Frank LaBeouf, Steve Nicol is with us as well. Stevie, Chelsea deserve this or no? Ooh, I think if you're Newcastle, you're disappointed you didn't get a point. Uh, yes, it was an incredible goal that won the game, but Newcastle were, were very close on two or three occasions, uh, as were Chelsea. So I, I would have suggested the right result was, was a draw. You know, the two things for this game are Newcastle have had a heart transplant. I mean, this is this really the same team or the same club that, not too long ago, looked as though it was scared to go on the field. They were like a bunch of kittens running around. They couldn't defend. They were throwing goals away and they couldn't score a goal. All of a sudden, you've got a team that actually believes. They're not scared of anybody. They get after it. And so they'll, be, they'll feel unlucky. But let's be honest. This goal that Havert scored, I, I don't think there's another player that's kicked a ball that would have finished this better. I mean... Ball comes over his shoulder, little tickle with a left peg to take the pace off it, and as it bounces up, puts it away. I mean, it was just incredible, and I hope they've shown it for a long, long time. So, in the end, because it's such a good goal, I guess Chelsea will say they deserved it, but honestly, I thought a point each would have been fair. It's Dennis Bergkamp-esque, wasn't it, Frank? And you are one of the loudest critics of Kai Havertz when he initially joined Chelsea. Obviously now a key part in this run that they're on. Yes, he is. And, uh, and um, I, I mean, it's a situation where you always win as a pundit because you can be critical when the guy is not good and say, well, you know what, I was right because I knew that he was capable of doing what he's, uh, capable of, uh, what he's showing us uh, right now. And that's the truth because I saw um, it's the truth for the situation for me because it's, it's what I saw when I was saw him playing for, for his German team and, uh, and I didn't see at first when he was playing for Chelsea. Now we see the real lovers, the guy who can finish. We have that finesse when he touches the ball, when he controls the ball like he did, when he scored the goal, and the influence he has uh, on the team at front that Chelsea is desperate right now because of the lack of uh, uh, consistency uh, of performances of, from uh, Lukaku or Werner or some others. Avers is the main man right now, and I'm very pleased. And uh, again, I've been critical towards him because I knew he, was, he could reach that level, and he, he does. Is Frank somehow making this about him? As um, an inspiration to Kai Havertz. D doesn't he always? <laughs> is he question? Uh, Nadem, red card or not? Should he have even been on the pitch for this? Um, so I think it's a red card, but the reason I think that is, as the ball's coming up, like I was caught in two minds initially because he, he was always looking at the ball. So as he's going for it, he's doing what he would do, assuming that he's just going for the ball and contested. But I think there's a thing where you, if you saw that you're going to be contesting it with somebody, maybe you go up for it in a different manner. Mm. So that's like the one where the ball's up in the air, someone tries to control it really high with their foot, but they go into somebody. Just because they were only looking at the ball doesn't mean it's not a red card. Right. And I think if they knew somebody was there, they'd try and do it differently. So I guess for me, it would be a red card because he's not really taken into account the full sort of severity of what the challenge could be if he went for it. So I think overall, it's probably a red card for me. And watching the game, they, they showed it from an angle that was pretty much pitch height. And so you could see Havertz and that left arm exactly how high up it came. And once I saw it from that angle, and that removed any doubt in my mind as to whether it should be right. Like, I, don't, I don't think he's intended to do it, but I think if he knew the player was there, he wouldn't jump up I, I think he intended. Stevie? I, I think. No, I'm happy with a yellow. He's jumping with a guy who's 16 foot tall. <laughs> he's going to have to use his arms all he can to try and get up there to, to try and compete. I, I just think that sometimes there are, there are situations where there's a possibility somebody's going to get hurt, whether it's whether it's a challenge in the air or a challenge on the ground, and we, and we have to accept that sometimes it just happens. There was no intent whatsoever, and again, they've taken this intent out of the law, which I think is ridiculous, because it's a physical sport. Sometimes people are going to get hurt, and it depends on how the situation. I don't think Havertz looks, looks for him at all. I think he's put his arms up to try and get as much lift as he can, and quite frankly, it could very easily have been the other way around. So I was quite happy with a yellow. Frank? Yes, I'm happy to. And I will advise my uh, colleague on the, on the, on the, with you, Dan, to, uh, to <laughs> just read the, the rules about that, you know, because wow. that's, that's controversial in a way. 
So if it's not, uh, um, if it's not, if he doesn't want to do it, if it's not done on purpose, you know, and if it's an accident, it's a yellow card. But if you get the saf safety of the opponent and you feel that it, the, the opponent is endangered, then it's a red card. I consider that burn uh, is not endangered because he carried on, because his safety wasn't endangered because he carried on. So therefore, it's only a yellow card. It's just the rule. I, w I thought at first, you know, if it's a, a an elbow, it's straight, straight a red card. No, it's not. It depends the intention, and the intention was more to go up here, up, up in the air, to protect himself and to try to win the ball. And I'm pretty sure he didn't do it on purpose. And then the safety of the player wasn't endangered because he carried on. Therefore, you only have a yellow card. Dan Burns is a tough guy. He's a tough guy. So maybe that's why. I can't believe. That's why I came. I can't on. believe we've got that. a big, hard, tough, rugged centre back crying because I'm just going to send a forward. Stevie, all, all I'm saying, hey. all I'm saying, all I'm saying, because I said I don't think he intended to do it because he was solely looking at the ball. But I, I feel like if he would have been able to see who he was contesting with it, he would have jumped differently because, like, I can't separate that from like the high boot one when you know somebody's not tried to kick someone in the face, but they'll kick somebody in the face. But they were thinking, let me just take well, it down it, or whatever. Uh, would you call that a red, even if somebody played on? I would, I would agree with you. If he sees him coming and challenges in a certain way that he catches him with his elbow and his head, then yes, it's a red. But the fact is, is he, didn't see, he didn't see him coming. He was, he was going for it. He was trying to get as much height as he could. He had his arms for protection, as we all should. And so that's, again, why it's a, a, a yellow card. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.